Professor Jordan, what a pleasure to see you here in Beijing. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Welcome back to China. Thank you. You even traveled to many provinces in China over the decades. I have, yes. My favorite one is to go to Hangzhou. Yes, in by the lake. By the lake. I love being there in the mornings. Beautiful. And it is a place where a lot of innovation is happening. It is, yes. Uh, Alibaba and and many other tech uh, right near the lake, and um, a lot of I think very healthy innovation that really brought、uh, value to people. We see even over the past three years the huge advancement of artificial intelligence. Now you are being regarded as the most important scientist behind the machine learning. Tell me more about how you assess、uh, rather. The latest development. Well, the latest development is, langu- is probably the large language models,、um, and、uh, on the one hand, they're surprisingly good. It, it's true; they're able to generate very fluent language, and they can summarize things,、uh, and they can do a bit of problem solving.、Um, you know, that said, they're also very limited, and some of the limitations aren't going to go away that soon. Well, they don't do serious reasoning of the kind that you and I do. They don't think in the long term. They don't do much with counterfactuals, what if statements.、Um, A lot of hallucinations. And they have. Well, that's another issue. But yes, they have. They they are they're as good as their data, and sometimes their data is not necessarily good、um, or not necessarily relevant. And so that's also going to be something that will be interesting when these models are built on data over many many years. And they're continually maintained. Some of the data that they were used is out of date; it's wrong. But the model doesn't know that; it has no way of gauging that.、Um, but still, it's not guided by truth. It doesn't experience the world in the way we do, and it doesn't know what's real out there. And、um, you can help guide it and steer it, but it always can do things that is just wrong. And so, I think it's best to think of it as a tool. It's just a very unusually powerful tool. Uh, the search engine was a tool.、Uh, translation systems are a tool, and they just allow us to augment ourselves and do more than we could do.、Um, and that augmentation、uh, probably is going to be exciting. I, I watch children, and they're not particularly fearful of it. They they embrace it. They want to do things with it, and and they can build on top of that. That's what humans do. Humans are going to be smarter than this system, and they're going to know how to use it in interesting ways.、Um, So、uh, it's a language uh, model, um, and so that's why I think it's most exciting. It really gets at the core of what it means to be human: is to express ourselves in language. But it's a different form of language model. It's it's a very、uh, brute force, predictive model based on huge amounts of data. It didn't learn language the way we learned it,、um, and it experiences if it you know、uh, the, the the semantics, the meaning in in a different、uh, in a different formal language. It, it's not ours. Uh, so the, the hopefully, my my hope is that it's more like a partnership. It's a good, interesting new tool.、Um, but you're right; it comes very fast, and so that's probably、uh, half of the concern is that it's maybe too fast. Do you also see that it's too fast? The steam engine came, and it was very; it could produce power, and so lots of jobs where it was human labor, you know, became not、uh, no, those were no longer valid jobs for. But it took maybe a generation, twenty years. And in a generation, people adapt. They can tell their children, "Don't go into that job. Go to this job." And right now, there are jobs that may disappear pretty quickly. In fact, some of the computer programming jobs are now a little bit in doubt because the, the Chat GPT、uh, can can do some、um, pretty good programming of you know,、um, reasonably、um, you know widely employed、um, programming acronyms.、Uh, so.、Um, So some low-level jobs will disappear. Now that doesn't mean that there won't be new ones, but they'll be a little higher level. They'll, they'll use the tool to do more things up at a higher level.、Uh, maybe a, a very concrete example is to summarize. So、um, when it's, there are jobs where people's job is to sit in a meeting and many people are talking and they write a summary.、Um, and a summary doesn't have to be deep; it just has to be somewhat accurate. And 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 that I think is something already the large language models are not too bad at. They can summarize lots of documents, and、um, in fact, they can even do more than humans in the sense they could summarize a hundred thousand documents.、Uh, so, jobs that are based on just pure summarization of a meeting, those jobs are in doubt. But I'm not sure how many such jobs there are. But nonetheless, it's very fast.、So、a year ago, I wouldn't have said that was going to happen. Now, if that's your job, 
you better look for another way to make to make a, have a job. Right. We see different voices spoken out over the past year, isn't it, about the latest development of artificial intelligence. Uh, Mr. Hinton, for example, uh, Mr. Musk, uh, uh, several others. Of course, uh, you know, they have their own perspectives uh, and why they decided to speak out. But to you, what do you see is the most important challenges and opportunities, the latest large language model? I don't think they're right. I don't think we should be spending all of our energy thinking about the machines killing all of the humans. That's a science fiction thing to think about. We should talk about it a little bit, but to have it dominate is really a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, making these systems accurate, making them able to express uncertainty, making them adaptable to new situations, those are the kind of things we need in domains like medicine or education, which are really important domains. And our systems do hallucinations, but they also don't even know how to say, I don't know. How can you have a system that doesn't know how to say, I don't know? That's a dangerous system. Uh, and it's hard to think about how to say, I don't know, in the right way, or, or to say a probability in the right way, to have it be calibrated, to have it be scalable, to have it work over large amounts of time um, and not have to be adjusted and tuned every day by some human. Um, also to start to take into account the producers of the data that gave the value to that. That's part of the economics of these models, which is that they're now centralizing power, that the people who have the model have a lot of power, but they didn't build the model in the sense that the data came from real humans who created good writings, created music, created art, and that all went into the model and they've lost the economic value. That's not right. So thinking about ways to build these kind of models that actually reveal who participated and make them part of the value chain. Think of it, the broader way to say it is that this is a development of a new engineering field. And new engineering fields come around about every 50 years in human history. Well, let's think about the industrial revolution is not even, a, you know, think about civil engineering. That was maybe, I don't know, a couple of hundred years ago. Chemical engineering, 50 years ago. Electrical engineering, 100 years ago. These are sort of the landmarks. And uh, it takes decades for those fields to emerge. So civil engineering was, how do I build a bridge so it doesn't fall down? Lots of bridges were built and they didn't, fall, they didn't work. And eventually, uh, you know, a field developed to manage like wind and sand and, and, and build tall buildings that don't fall down and so on. Um, chemical engineering allowed us to build medicines, to, to, to make medicine at scale, to make products that clean things, that to, uh, to put chlorine in swimming pools, to, you know, and build antibiotics. And then obviously electrical engineering is kind of easy, our lights, our, our heat, our, our computers. And those, those arose not like in a, in a few minutes of some great idea came. It was a few good ideas like electromagnetic equations, but also how do you build circuits? How do you bring, make devices inside a home that are safe? Uh, how do you make sure that everybody has access so the prices are in a you know, reasonable range? Um, how do you put communication on the waves? How do you do that in a fair way? How do you, just a huge number of things that touch all humans and required input, not just from engineers, but required input from everybody to make sure that it is, is, is a good thing, mostly for humans. And of course there was always troubles, um, but humans worked it through. And I think that's exactly what's happening now. And so instead of building factories out in a field to make chemicals or building uh, electrical plants, we're building something like a transportation system that takes in data about where all the cars are and what's the availability and what are the needs of the transportation network and make sure that you know, good transportation happens. Or medical systems, that there are certain diseases, there's a certain need for certain vaccines, there are certain populations that need to be protected, there are certain new developments that need to be spread and so on and so forth. That should be an overall big network that is really effective. And that's like chemical engineering. That's like building a system and so what I don't like about the AI thing is that it focuses on a single individual. It focuses on a single computer and making it smart. Really, the focus should be on the collective. And the collective is all humans, mm -hmm. but it's humans and computers together. That's a collective. And you want to think on the goals of that collective. And I think there's many. Make it safe, make it reliable, make it understandable, make it fair. These are all not obvious challenges, and that's what I really want us to be focusing on in these years and not, not worrying about things that are, are, are science fiction. 
Artificial intelligence, uh, there are many areas, in fact, of potential. Uh, what we talked about is mainly uh, large language models, uh, but also uh, related to that, if not necessarily uh, different, with my humble opinion, it's also about a discussion between uh, what we are as human beings and how we are likely to have some kinds of harmonious, if possible, relationship with artificial intelligence. What is your opinion of it? Uh, especially artificial intelligence could be developed into an area where it can resemble uh, how human mind works and also probably the other way around, it could help human minds to find out how they works. It, it, it could. I mean, I, I, when I and many people in the field started, we were thinking that way. We thought that we would help understand the brain and, and understand psychology, and that would feed into computers and vice versa. I don't think that's what's happened. No? I don't think so. Um, you know, I think the, before the current era, the biggest development in information technology was probably the search engine. The search engine changed all of our lives. It made things accessible to all of us uh, and allowed us to communicate in new ways. I would create a web page, you would find it, and there would be... The, the, and if you don't know some fact or some, you know, if you want to read some about some mathematical thing that you just heard about, you could, you could easily quickly access it. That changed humanity. Uh, and I would argue mostly for the good. Um, and the search engine was definitely not an imitation of human intelligence at all. It, it was, it was in, uh, but it had a profound impact. And so what it really did is it augmented the human mind. It allowed it to have a bigger memory or a bigger access to things than it ever had before. Um, and I think that augmentation is an important way to think. Uh, instead of trying to think that we're going to understand the mind uh, so that we can fix it, that's very, very not humble. You know, um, yes, human mind is broken in some ways, but it's also extremely complex. Mm -hmm. And every individual human is complex. And, and ability to manipulate and, and change and affect things is very limited. We try with education. We try with uh, you know, parents and families. Uh, but to think that technology would suddenly come in and be able to do that, I think is, again, not what I like to think about. I don't think that's really appropriate. Um, and I think it's, it, to understand the brain is, a, is probably the last big problem in science. I mean, it's, it's a hugely complex entity, the brain, uh, unbelievably complex. Uh, and we have very little understanding how thought arises in the brain. But we do have brains that have diseases, Alzheimer's disease, and other diseases are hurt lots of people. And many of those are, you know, there's mental illness. Uh, many of those are, in some sense, more simple. They don't require understanding all of the thinking in the brain. They understand that it's more like the wires, you know, what chemicals are not present what, and what chemicals need to be present. Uh, how do you adjust things so that you don't get uh, degenerative Alzheimer's disease? Um, and you need genetics there, you need some neuroscience, you need working with animal models. And we still don't have it yet, but it's, you know, um, it's I think, in our lifetime. It, it's it's going to be understood and probably you know may, may be mitigated completely, uh, you know even a little further field cancer I think is now getting to be close enough to be understood that it can go away in our, our children's lifetime there may be no cancer, and uh, so I think it's more like that helping the human to be better uh, by adding around it and supplying new kind of potential and um, you know so think about one of the things that makes us most human is is our ability to create art, music, novels. Right, and, and I do not see the computer taking the over for that, okay? And I don't think that's even a reasonable goal. We should understand the mind and the brain, how it creates art, and therefore use that to create art. I think instead we create things that are interesting and, and uh, exciting to humans. They look at it and they say, well, that's interesting, but I could do better. But the chips competition, the GPUs, you know. I do believe that we're able to develop brand new things that aren't just build more chips and build more GPUs. That alone will not solve the problems. The, the, and so we have to work on new things. And again, new things require multiple perspectives and minds. And, um, and, uh, and because it's not so much about the hardware, then it really does flow easily everywhere. Um, in fact, you know, I remember coming to China 20 years ago or so, and I would talk to the students here, and I was very impressed by how smart they were, but they didn't know anything about modern, you know, developments. And it's because they didn't have the papers to read. They just, or they didn't have the professors to tell them. I came back, you know, 10 years later, and everybody knew. And why? Well, there's something called the archive, and that's a place where all of us put our papers. Every scientist puts their papers there, open. 
and the students are all reading those papers. And they would come up to me and ask me you know, to, to explain some idea in this, my paper. And, and it was very fun. It was very, they were so enthusiastic and they were so knowledgeable. And then five years after that, I started to see when they would apply to come to work at my university, how good they were. And now several of the students in my, my group are, are from are Chinese uh, who came up in that generation. Um, you know, so it was definitely something that was you know, uh, easily accessible and, and digestible to everyone. Again, not just the big power countries, but really anyone. Professor Jordan, what a pleasure. My pleasure as well. It was Thank very interesting so to talk to you. Thank